This Saturday will mark exactly one year since Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg passed away. Many of us still remember where we were when we heard the devastating news and the immediate sense of dread many on the left felt as their worst fears came true. She died while Donald Trump was president. He would get to replace her. You would think the now three remaining liberal justices on the court would take a lesson from what happened, especially 83-year-old Justice Stephen Breyer, the oldest living justice. But apparently not. Are you going to retire? Am I going to retire? Eventually, I don't want to okay. die. Okay. Essentially, when people say, when are you going to retire? They're afraid you're going to die when a Republican's in office and they won't replace someone who is more in keeping with your judicial philosophy. How do you feel about all the speculation about how long Stephen Breyer's going to uh, I myself would prefer not to die, period. <laughs> I'd imagine most of us would prefer not to die, but the future of the Supreme Court is not a laughing matter. Democrats have a real problem on their hands with a conservative-dominated, hard-right 6-3 court that is in many ways illegitimate. Neil Gorsuch's seat was arguably stolen from President Barack Obama after Mitch McConnell refused to consider his nominee in an election year. Trump's next appointee was Brett Kavanaugh, whose tumultuous confirmation was marked by sexual assault allegations, claims he denied, and which were investigated only under very narrow parameters by the Trump Justice Department. For example, we now know that of 4,500 tips to the FBI during Kavanaugh's background check, just 10 led to further interviews also known as 0.002%. And when Ruth Bader Ginsburg died, McConnell suddenly decided election year nominees were A-OK. -okay. The Senate voted to confirm Amy, Amy Coney Barrett by a 52-48 margin only 30 days after she was nominated by President Trump, just one week before election day and after tens of millions of Americans had already voted. For Democrats, then, a 6-3 court is a huge problem. But there is a solution. They could just expand the number of justices. The number nine is not in the Constitution. And while President Joe Biden has seemed somewhat reluctant to take that step, he has ordered a commission to look into potential reforms. A commission, sadly, that is moving very, very slowly. House Democrats did introduce a bill to expand the court to 13 justices earlier this year, a bill that was co-sponsored by my next guest. Here with me is New York Congressman Mondaire Jones, who's also a former litigator and once worked in the Obama Justice Department. Congressman, thanks for coming back on the show tonight. You are a progressive, and progressives are known for pushing things like Medicare for all, debt-free college, $15 minimum wage. Many would argue there's an argument that court expansion could be even more important for the progressive cause, because this 6-3 court could basically strike down a lot of those progressive goals. A court in which three members were appointed by a president who did not win the popular vote. Why aren't Democrats in general, and progressives in particular, talking more about court expansion? You seem to be pretty lonely on this. <laughs> well, I'm not lonely so long as the American people broadly support the idea of adding four seats to the Supreme Court, as with so many other issues. Uh, you won't be surprised to learn that members of Congress are oftentimes are eclipsed by their own constituents uh, when it comes to arriving at the right decision. Yes. Just one day after I introduced the Judiciary Act of 2021, along with Judiciary Committee Chairman Jerry Nadler uh, and the chair of the House Subcommittee on Courts, Hank Johnson, uh, a Data for Progress poll was conducted, and it showed already, even back then, a day after uh, introduction of the bill in April, uh, that 75 percent of Democrats supported adding four seats to the Supreme Court and a plurality, specifically 47 percent of likely voters, supported the idea of adding four seats to the Supreme Court. That is because the American people know what is at stake. Supreme Court expansion is democracy-saving legislation, and that is why we must pass it. So... Justice Breyer is not a fan of expanding the court. Uh, you saw him a moment ago on the, uh, talking to Stephen Colbert. He also spoke, he's doing a book tour, he also spoke to Fox News' Chris Wallace uh, about the calls for his retirement. Have a listen. I don't intend to die on the court. I don't think I'll be there forever. So why didn't you retire? I didn't retire because I decided on balance I wouldn't retire. He says he doesn't intend to die on the court, but the truth is none of us know when we're going to die. I certainly wouldn't be presuming I'm safe from death at any time, let alone when I'm in my early 80s. 
Why do you think he hasn't learned any lessons from what happened with Ruth Bader Ginsburg? Uh, Betty, I, I'd be remiss if I didn't, you know, make the observation that, that, that this is a sensitive subject for many people who are, are up there in age, right? It is a macabre idea uh, that, uh, that one should, should so seriously contemplate one's own uh, potential demise. Uh, but the fact is, uh, I worry about the state of mind of anyone who uh, is finding humor, it would appear, uh, based on that Colbert interview, uh, in a crisis that he himself has created. Uh, Justice Breyer has had a distinguished career. Uh, I said that many months ago when I became the first member of Congress to publicly call on him to retire. Uh, and if he is serious about preserving his legacy, uh, and, you know, he can still promote his book in retirement, uh, then he should announce his retirement and give this president the opportunity uh, to nominate, and for the Senate, now that it is controlled by Democrats, uh, for the time being, uh, to confirm uh, a justice yeah. uh, that shares his ideology to the Supreme Court. It will not change the balance of the 6-3 majority, but it will prevent something even worse, if you can imagine, which yes. is a 7 2 far right hyperpartisan majority on the Supreme Court. I mean, 7-2, we might as well just all give up and go home. Uh, and you're right, it is a sensitive subject to talk about people's age and death. There's a very easy way to avoid that, uh, bring in age limits for justices. I think America's Supreme Court is one of the only Supreme Courts on earth which guarantees lifetime appointments. So that would be some solution. Let me just quote to you, let me just play another clip to you from Justice Breyer. He's doing this book tour, doing a lot of interviews. Uh, he spoke to NPR recently, and here's what he said about calls for court reform from people like yourself. Have a listen. What goes around comes around. And if the uh, Democrats can do it, the Republicans can do it. And uh, therefore, uh, beware. It's such a bizarre argument. If Democrats can do it, Republicans can do it. Republicans already did it. They kept the court at the eight for the entire last year of the Obama presidency. Ted Cruz said that if Hillary won, they would keep it at eight for another four years. I mean, isn't he being naive at best, disingenuous at worst? Uh, it is a bizarre, intellectually dishonest argument, uh, which is why I, I, I regretfully have been wondering if it has, uh, this recent tour of his had something to do with promoting his book uh, more than an effort to preserve democracy. Uh, Republicans don't need to expand the court because they've already done it successfully. They've changed the size of the court uh, at various times, uh, and they are now squarely in control in a way that would normally be fine, except today's Republican, just, Republican appointed justices are deeply conservative uh, and, and partisan, to be more precise, to the point of overturning Roe v. Wade, yes. which you know is decades of, of settled law in this country and a shadow docket opinion, no less. Uh, and of course, when you get rid of the filibuster, yes. as you will have to do to expand the court, we will also pass voting rights legislation. And we know that this Republican Party cannot win national elections when people are allowed to vote in this country. And so I'm not as concerned about the idea that one day at some indeterminate time in the future, Republicans may have regained control uh, of, uh, of the Senate uh, and and uh, of, the, of the House and of the White House, and, and will do the same thing by adding additional justices to the Supreme Court. I don't believe that that will happen, but it's no answer to the existing crisis where we must do so, something. I mean, the Supreme Court struck down effectively the Voting Rights Act of 1965. Yep, Voting Rights Act, eviction moratorium, abortion rights. I mean, it's, the list goes on and on. As I said earlier, there's nothing magical or constitutional about the number nine. In fact, the court's size has been changed on multiple occasions by multiple presidents uh, over the last couple of centuries. You have co-sponsored this bill to expand the court to 13 justices. Why 13? Uh, is there a reason behind that? Why four more? Yeah. Uh, adding four more justices who care about our democracy... Uh, would get us to a point where we would have, once again, a pro-democracy majority on the Supreme Court. Uh, I mentioned the Voting Rights Act. Uh, this was something that was reauthorized with bipartisan, near unanimous support in the year 2006. And in decision after decision, the Roberts Court, which has never seen a voter suppression law that it found to be unconstitutional, has dismantled, at this point, 
that crown jewel of the civil rights movement. Uh, and so, you know, adding four justices is about getting us to the baseline of, of balance uh, and of a pro-democracy majority. And to your point, Mehdi, this is, there's nothing that says that uh, the court has to remain at nine justices. The size of the court has changed seven times before by statute in our nation's history, including during the Reconstruction period to defeat white supremacy. Uh, when Abraham Lincoln was assassinated and Andrew Johnson uh, as ascended to that office, uh, Congress said, whoa, this guy doesn't agree with the Reconstruction legislation uh, and is going to appoint justices uh, that continue to render decisions like Dred Scott. Uh, so what it did was it deprived Andrew Johnson of the opportunity to appoint uh, justices yes. like-minded to, to himself to the court. Uh, and then, of course, when Ulysses S. Grant subsequently became president and he was, he was pro-Reconstruction, uh, they 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 expanded the court again. Uh, this but is what you have to do. You have people sadly on the Supreme though. Yeah. Sorry, I was going to say we're out of time. Sadly though, it seems like people like Stephen Breyer, brilliant legal minds, don't know our own history. But I'm glad you're making the case, Congressman Mondaire Jones. Appreciate your time tonight. Hi, I'm Mehdi Hassan. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. You can see more of the Mehdi Hassan show by clicking on any of the videos on this screen and make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thank you for watching.